This is Math 99, uh, Section 9.3b, and we're doing matrices still. We're going to use them on 3 by 3s So let me get a 3 by 3 matrix up here for us to solve. All right, so there is a, uh, a 3 by 3 matrix, and we're going to solve it. And if you remember, when we first started working with these, we talked about trying to get zeros along here. And what we're doing is we're essentially getting into row echelon form. We, we might not, not all get all those to ones, but it's, it's essentially row echelon form in order to solve it, to back solve it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, make this into a matrix. So I'm just going to lift the coefficients off there. So 1x, negative 1y, negative 2z, and negative 1 is the solution for that one. 1x, 1y, 1z, and 6. 1x, 1y, uh, negative 1z, and a 4. All right, so... Now what I want to do is use some row operations to get zeros along here. So I'm first going to get a zero here and here in the X column, and then I'll come back for the Ys. So this is actually a, boy, it's really set up nice. Um, this, is, this is all ones. So I could just go, um, and instead of calling them equations, I'll call them rows. Row one minus row two, put that into the row two spot. And I could also go uh, row one minus row three. Put that into the row three spot. Notice that'll give me a zero here and a zero here. So as I do those steps, uh, my matrix, the first row is, is untouched. And then um, I'm going to be subtracting this. So I'm going to flip all those to negative. So zero, negative two, negative three, negative seven. And then again, I'm, I'm subtracting this one, so I'll switch all the signs on those. So I don't have to keep track of it. Zero, negative two, uh, negative one, and negative five. Okay, so I've got these taken care of. I've got my zeros here and here. So now that I've done that, I want to get a zero here. And uh, again, this is a nice, friendly system. Um, I could go row two minus row three. That would give me a zero here. Put that answer into row three. So as I do that, my system, my first row is not going to be changed. My second, my second row in my system is not going to be changed. And since I'm subtracting, I'll change all these signs. Zero, zero, I wanted to happen. Negative three plus one is negative two. Um, negative seven plus five, what's that? Negative two. Great. So now I have it in this form where I can start to just uh, do some back solving. For example, this row right here, remember these are x's, these are y's, these are z's. It says negative 2z equals negative 2. So z must equal 1. This line says negative 2y minus 3z is negative 7. But I know z is 1, so I plug that in. Negative 2 minus 3 times 1 equals negative 7. Oh, negative 2y, sorry. So negative 2y minus 3. Negative 7, add 3, negative 2y is negative 4, oh, so it looks like y is 2, and then this top uh, row is 1x minus 1y minus 1z, oh, 2z's, equals negative 1. Substitute in those values, x minus 2 minus 2 times 1 equals negative 1. So this is x minus 4 equals negative 1. So it looks like x equals 3. I can write my solution that way with the x equals y equals z equals. I could write as the order triplet 3, 2, 1. Now, what I want to do is check this on my calculator. So I'm going to take my original matrix and plug it into my calculator. And then um, I'll do that. Remember, it's reduced row echelon form should confirm my answer. All right, so let me enter that in. And again, I go into the matrix menu. And now um, I'm going to edit this. And this is a three by four. Three rows, uh, four columns. And let's see, one, negative one, negative two, negative one, 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 six, And then 1, 1, negative 1, 4. 
And I always like to check my matrix. So I'll go back into that matrix menu, pull up the menu. I just want to make sure I entered everything right. Uh, 1, negative 1, negative 2, negative 1, 1, 1, 1, 6, 1, 1, negative 1, 4. Great. So now let this do a little bit of work for me. Three, two, one. That's the answer. Great. So I confirmed that my answer worked uh, with that three by three. So let's go ahead and do another one. So let's solve this matrix then. Uh, I'm going to rewrite it. Uh, the system. I'm going to rewrite it as a matrix. So three x negative two y three z negative three. 1x, 1y, 1z, 4, 1x, negative 4y, 2z, negative 9. All right, so taking a look at this, using this 3 to eliminate the other ones looks a little troublesome to me. I don't, I don't like it so much. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to switch row 2 and row 1. Just so I can get a 1 up there, it'll just be easier for me to use the cancel stuff out with. And notice uh, I'm just changing the order of the equations, I'm, I'm not changing anything about the equation. So I'm, I'm not changing the solution at all by doing this. So again, what I want is zeros here and a zero here. So thinking about that, I could go negative uh, three plus, no, sorry, right, negative three times row one and add it to row two, that would make a zero here put that into row two. I could also go just row one minus row two, uh, row three, sorry, and put that into row three to, to get a zero there. So let me think about this. So negative three times row one, that would be a negative three, negative three, a negative three, and a negative 12. So negative three row one plus row two. Row one doesn't change. That makes this a zero. Negative three plus negative two is a negative five. Negative three plus three, that makes that a zero. And negative 12 plus negative 13 is a negative 15. Great, and then I want to go row one minus uh, row three into row three. Let me clean up that scratch. And I'm gonna negate row three, so I'm gonna go through and change all these signs. So row one plus row three, there's a zero there. Four plus one is a five. Negative two plus one is a negative one. And four plus nine is a 13. Now, you might notice from here, I can actually solve this equation from here because notice I know what y is. And if I know what y is, I could plug it in and get z, et cetera. So I, if I solve it from here, I'm, I'm gonna do it the other way too, not solving it from here, just to, to see, all right? See how I can figure out what y is here. Negative 5y equals negative 15, so y must equal 3. Then I can put that into here. 5y uh, minus z equals 13. So if y is 3, 5 times 3 minus z equals 13. Subtract 15. Negative z would equal negative 2, which means that z would equal 2. Then I have those two, I could plug them into here. X plus Y plus Z equals four. Y is three, Z is two. So X must be a negative one. And it's solved. Now, if you didn't see that, that you could, you know, if you're just kind of shoving yourself through this algorithm that make zeros here, make a zero here, you could keep going from here and you'll, you'll still get there. But just in case, um, you decided to go that route. If I want to turn this into a zero now, I can just add those two rows together. I can go row two plus row three, that answer into row three. And notice that when I do that, first row is not changed, second row is not changed. And then the third row, zero, add those together as a zero, add those together as a negative one, add those together is a negative two. And then you can uh, do your back solving from here. What's nice is you know what Z is right away. You know what Y is right away. Plug them both back in, you get X. 
All right, you can write your solution this way, um, or you can write it as the ordered uh, trio, the, the ordered, that three-dimensional point, negative one, oh, sorry, y is three, these have to be in alphabetical order, z is two. All right, let's uh, put this into the calculator, use that reduced row echelon form, and see if, uh, see if we got it, we can check our answer. Matrix menu, I'm going to edit this. It's already a 3 by 4. So my matrix is 3, negative 2, 3, negative 3. I like to check my matrix, make sure that I entered it right. 3, negative 2, 3, negative 3, 1, 1, 1, 4, 1, negative 4, 2, negative 9. Great. Let's re reduce row echelon form this thing. Negative one, three, two, that's the answer I got. Beautiful. Let's do another one. All right, so I have this system. And let me turn it into a matrix. So I'm just gonna lift those coefficients off. Two X, negative one Y, negative one Z and one. One, three, two, 13. And then here I have a 4x, a 1y, a negative 1z, and a 7. And, you know, again, I want to get zeros there. I notice there's a 1 here. I think I'll switch those two just to, to make it a little easier for me to eliminate the x's. So row 2, I'm going to switch that with row 1. And I like to write down my row operations because then, you know, if I made a mistake or something like that, somewhere along the way I can go back. 213. Again, I'm just switching row one and row two. So let's see, if I want to get rid of this, I want to make zeros here and here. So I'm going to go negative two times row one and add it to row two. Put that answer into row two. And then this four, I'll go back up to that one again. How about I go negative four times row one, row three, put that into row three. So a little bit of scratch here. Negative 2 times row 1, that would give me a negative 2, a negative 6, negative 4, negative 6. And I add that to row 2. So my first row doesn't change. 2 plus negative, now I'm going to do this. A negative 2 plus 2 is 0. Negative 6 plus negative 1 is negative 7. Negative 4 plus negative 1 is negative 5. Negative 26 plus 1 is negative 25. Get rid of that scratch. And now I'll go negative 4 times row 1 plus that. So negative 4, negative 12, negative 8, negative uh, 13 times 4, 40, 52, I do believe. Now I'll add it to row 3, negative 4 plus 4 is 0. Negative 12 plus 1 is negative 11. Negative 8 plus 1, negative 9. Negative 52 plus 7, negative 45. So now... We want to get a zero here. Boy, that's kind of ugly. I got this negative seven and I've got that 11. So how about I go um, something like 11 times row two and then minus seven times row three. Notice that I'll make one of these a 77, the other one a negative 77. And I put that into row three. All right, so this is gonna take a little bit of scratch work. 11 times row two makes this a negative 77, a negative 55, and 25 times 11, negative 275. And then uh, multiplying this one by negative 7, that makes this a positive 77. Uh, 9 times 7 is a positive 63. And then 45 times 7 is a positive 315. So my first row, still 1, 3, 2, 13. My second one, 0, negative 7, negative 5, negative 25. My third row, add these together. Those are zeros. Uh, 63 minus 55 is 8. And then 315 minus uh, 275 is 40. That actually doesn't come out too bad. Uh, so look at that. 8, remember these are x's, these are y's, these are z's. 8z is equal to 40. So that means that uh, z must equal 5. 
So then I can plug that into here, negative 7y uh, minus 5z equals negative 25. Uh, plug that 5 into here, negative 7y minus 5 times 5 equals negative 25. So negative 7y minus 25 equals negative 25. Negative 7y equals 0, so y must equal 0. That's easy to plug in. This third one is x plus 3y plus 2z equals 13. So z is 5. y is 0. 3 times 0 is just 0. So I have this. x plus 10 is 13, so x must equal 3. So I can write my solution this way. I can write it as the order triplet 3, 0, 5. Let me check that on the calculator. Plug in this original system. Again, I like to check my matrix, just make sure I entered everything right. Sure looks good to me. Oh no, that should be a negative one. Oh gosh, good thing I checked. There we go. Better. Okay, let me reduce row echelon form this thing. 305, great, that's my solution. So the next thing that I'd like to do is just um, interpret some results. So I'm not going to do the whole um, system by hand. You, you've seen examples of that. But I'm gonna put a couple of systems into my calculator as matrices and then, um, then interpret the results after reduce row echelon form. So let me get these in here. So there's a there's a matrix, a system represented as a matrix. And notice this would be 3x plus 5y minus 7z equals 8. 1x minus y plus 5z equals negative 2. 4x plus 4y minus 2z equals 6. And I would do all my work, I'd get it into some form, and at some point, Something like this would happen. And notice that my bottom row is all zeros. Let me uh, maybe have this express this as a uh, whole thing. So interesting that that happened. Zero x plus zero y plus zero z equals zero. Zero equals zero. So remember what happens when we get a true statement. There's an infinite number of solutions. So this system has an infinite number of solutions. That's a that's a valid answer for that. Let's look at one other situation, and I'll bet you can guess that it's going to be the no solution. But let's see what happens. So I'm going to get a new matrix in here now. So there's my matrix x plus y plus z equals 5, 1x plus 2y plus z equals 1, 2x plus 3y plus 2z equals 0. I'm going to reduce our echelon form this thing. And notice I get this 0, 0, 0 equals 1. So essentially I have 0 equals 1. That's a false statement. No solution. Uh, notice what's happening here. If I add the first two rows together, 1 plus 1 is 2, 1 plus 2 is 3, 1 plus 2 is 2, I get all of these, but 5 plus 1 is not 6. If this had ended up being a 6, I would have gotten 0 equals 0, and there'd be infinite solutions. But since I got a 0, notice that like this equation is made up of those two equations, but it doesn't end up with the same answer. So that means they must never, uh, all three of them, don't all, don't all touch in the same spot. All right, uh, do some of the practice. Let me know what questions that you have. Use that calculator to, to, to uh, sorry, use that calculator to check your answers and uh, get some good practice in my hands.